What's happening, beautiful peoples of the YouTube? It's your boy, Eddie, from Teat Source. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 224, the show where we show off some of the best gaming and productivity setups. So if you wanna be a part of the series, consider submitting your own. There's a detailed video on how to enter, which will be linked down below. But with that said, sit back, relax, because it's time for Setup Wars. This holiday season, get 30% off Wondershare Mobiletrans, who was also kind enough to sponsor today's video. Mobiletrans is a desktop application that helps over 50 million users transfer data from one phone to another. You can use Mobiletrans to transfer WhatsApp data between an Android and iPhone with just a click of a button. Just simply plug both of your devices into your PC and select which data you want transferred to your new phone and then start the process. Mobiletrans also supports other apps as well, like Viber, Kik, and more. If you don't use any of those apps, you can still use the program to transfer data from one phone to another. So if you're switching from Android to Apple or vice versa, you can still transfer all of your data. On top of all that, you can also back up your phone as well. It saves all the data from your smartphone to the PC as a backup in case you ever need to restore everything back. Wondershare Mobile Trans is available on both Windows and Mac. And if you guys wanna get 30% off right now, make sure to click the link down below. Kicking off the episode is Joe from Orlando, Florida and his majestic living room setup. Now, when I first looked at this, I thought this dude photoshopped Goku's Nimbus in this setup, but turns out it's the real deal. He added a cloud on the top of the setup with some LEDs inside, giving off this really cool glow effect that complements the rest of the setup. Definitely the first time I've seen this on the show and I just love how he went with a unique white and gold color scheme as well. So Joe is a college student and this is the setup he uses for gaming and programming. He's rocking triple 27 inch monitors that he mounted to the desk that consists of an Ikea countertop and a couple of Alex drawers. He actually modded the desk slightly by skinning it with a glossy white vinyl. For peripherals, Joe paired the glorious Model O gaming mouse with the Anpro 2 and I like those subtle golden keycaps you added as well, but I gotta say man, you murdered that mouse pad. You didn't have to cut that big of a slit inside to run those wires through, especially since you can disconnect both of the cables from the keyboard and mouse. I do want to point out the clever placement of the wireless charger though. Putting it closer to the edge of the desk like that keeps the cable shorter and less obtrusive, so you can just easily route it underneath the desk. Well done. The only audio source for the setup is the LS30 gaming headset hanging underneath the desk, but he does have a Blue Yeti microphone hooked up to a boom arm that he also modded. I do like the nice balance of white and gold he used for the paint job. Nicely done. You can definitely see the dedication he put into this entire setup with all the little mods to stay consistent with the color scheme. But the most impressive thing about the setup has to be his custom water-cooled PC that he built in the O11 XL. I like how he painted the trim on the Corsair fans and even the heat sinks on the motherboard. This guy definitely went all in. I think Goldfinger would definitely approve. Cables seem to be managed pretty well underneath the desk with the help of some raceways and cable clips, but what stood out to me the most was the positioning of the power strip. At first I was kind of confused. I thought it was about to fall down, but then I realized he angled it that way on purpose so the plugs don't stick out as much from the bottom. Very clever. I also appreciate you trying to cover that black power strip cable with a giant sleeve, but you made it stick out that much more because of how big it is. You know, those cable sleeves are usually meant for more than one cable. So going with something smaller like this, for example, would be less obtrusive. Speaking of obtrusive, I did notice those uneven cables between the artwork. A very simple fix to this would be to grab these tiny white cable clips and straighten up the path of the cables. Believe it or not, something so minor like this can really improve the overall aesthetic of your setup. However, I have to say, I love the artwork you added on the walls. It adds a nice level of personalization that ties the whole setup together and bonus points on the LED lights you added behind them. Also, since majority of the color scheme comes from the RGB lighting, he's able to shift the appearance of the entire setup pretty easily by just changing the colors. There's not much you can do with the PC being blocked off by one of your monitors, unfortunately, unless you want to tilt it more to its side. But overall, I think what you built here is fantastic. I just love seeing these unique and creative setups on the show. So keep them coming and thank you, Joe, for entering. Coming in at number two is Jonathan from New Jersey and his super clean gaming setup. I gotta say, I'm impressed you managed to fit all that gear on such a tiny desk and you still had room for your PC as well. 
Unfortunately, with a limited amount of space, you were forced to put the monitors side by side, which isn't the most effective since you get a nasty bezel in the middle and neither monitor is centered with your head, forcing you to slightly rotate your neck for gaming. But I get it, this was the only way to make it work and keep your setup looking this clean. I think an ultrawide monitor would fit this setup a lot better, but obviously that depends on your budget and preference. It looks like John is loyal to the Logitech brand. We got the G Pro mechanical keyboard with the G903 mouse and a pair of G560 speakers. We also got the Logitech G935 headset hanging underneath the desk. And since we're down here, cables are neatly routed in the back with the help of some cable clips and into the beautiful custom water cool system that is built in another dynamic O11 case. We got the i5 8600K in here with the ROG Strix 1080 Ti. I'm absolutely loving the black and purple color scheme with the white coolant. I think it fits perfectly with that color scheme. The only issue is with the fan configuration. You have no intake for that PC. The bottom fans are placed upside down as exhaust, unless I'm blind, but you might want to flip those the other way around to improve your thermals. Other than that and that awkward monitor placement, it's a pretty solid setup given the space limitations. Thank you, John, for entering. Speaking of awkward, up next is Manuel from Miami and his uh, interesting minimalistic setup. The first thought that came into my mind was, damn, his PC must be having the time of its life hanging from the side of the desk like that. What a thrill. But for us watching, our anxiety levels have never been this high. All jokes aside, this is actually a really clever way of keeping the PC visible without having to actually install a drawer or a side table. He originally had the PC mounted on the top of the monitor, but never got to enjoy the view of his PC, so this was the next best option while keeping his setup minimalistic and symmetrical. Manuel's occupation is in sales, and this is the setup he uses for gaming, editing, and work. We got that super sweet 49-inch Samsung Ultrawide mounted against the wall with a few raceways hiding the cables going down. Let's actually forget about the setup for a second. I want to know what that bike is doing mounted on your wall next to you. That is definitely a conversation starter. The desk actually looks pretty dope. It's a 63 inch home office desk that has this really cool modern look to it with the black top and gray base. We got the Corsair K95 Platinum keyboard and the Iron Claw wireless mouse with beautiful cable management. He used some double sided tape to hold up the cable sleeve underneath the desk and a bunch of painted raceways to channel the rest of the wires across the wall. Beautiful, beautiful work. This is actually Manuel's second time on the show now that I think about it. I remember I've seen that wall mounted bike somewhere. It also looks like he's still using the same water cool system as before with the 8700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. I don't know if I realized this before, but I find it funny that the reservoir and pump are hanging off the side of the PC as well. He did state in the notes that he is planning on picking up an RTX 3080 pretty soon once there is stock available. As cool as the setup is, I'm more interested in who did your flooring and how they got it to look that shiny. It looks immaculate. I'm not sure what episode you were featured in before, but it's nice to see you again on the show. Thank you, Manuel, for coming back on. Next up is Mika from Toronto, Canada and his very creative multi-purpose setup. So he's currently a student and works for his family's printing company. This is the setup he built for gaming, graphic design, photography, and videography for the products and machines that they sell. The entire room used to be a garage, but they renovated it to be an office and home gym. I'm already loving the layout of this setup. It's a hybrid between an island and a traditional against the wall setup with plenty of space between the desk and both of the monitors. We got another 49 inch super ultra wide from Samsung as the main display and a 4K 27 inch monitor up top as a secondary. My only concern with this type of layout is the distance between Mika's eyes and the top 4K display. I would assume everything would be really small to read at that resolution, which would defeat the purpose of having a 4K display. For audio, he's got two massive Rocket 5 studio monitors sitting on floor stands and the HyperX Cloud 2s, which all plug into his Roland Rubix audio interface. I would imagine he would go with wireless peripherals for convenience, but to my surprise, he's actually using the Black Widow X Chroma keyboard with a couple of mice. Mika must be using a ton of extension cables to route all the cables from the setup to the back of his PC, which is tucked away in the corner. It's packing the 9900K and a Gigabyte RTX 2080 Super with an interesting fan layout. It looks like all the fans are flipped around and the back of the case is now the intake. I don't know if passing the GPU cable above the card was the cleanest route, but the rest of the build looks dope. Cable management for this type of setup definitely takes more of an effort, and Mika did not disappoint. At first, I thought he routed the cables through the wall, but turns out he positioned the raceways perfectly behind the speakers to hide them. You can't even see them looking straight at the setup. You would have to look at it from an angle. 
He also has a couple of laptops on a desk next to his main setup that are used for mostly work. And finally, a little TV setup that he built in the corner of the room. I love how there is no actual TV stand or anything, just a couple of corner wall shelves holding up his PC and both of his consoles. He literally has everything here with no reason to leave the gaming den ever. You got a mid-sized fridge for all the snacks and drinks, a place to work out, game, and even get some work done. I think Mika did a really great job on utilizing all the extra space in this renovated garage. And there's even a bit of personalization with that Wayne Simmons jersey on the wall that's surrounded by Natalie panels. Thank you, Mika, for sharing this with us. Last but not least is Thanos, the man himself, coming all the way from Greece. I didn't take Thanos to be the type of guy who likes RGB, but here we are. We got a beautiful dual setup built on a corner desk layout with two lemon tabletops. Now the main setup has a 34 inch ultrawide from LG mounted against the wall with the Corsair K70 Lux keyboard and G502 mouse. Routing those cables through the desk is great and all, but I feel like you could have easily tucked away the Qi charger cable under the mouse pad instead of over it. The only audio source for this setup are those E25s from Edifier, but it's worth investing in a headset or headphones to cycle between your PC and your console setup. By the way, if you're looking for a place to store your laptop while freeing up some extra space on your desk, you can pick up this monitor riser from Amazon and keep your laptop under it and your PS4 on top. Or if you want to completely hide it, you can install this pencil drawer underneath your desk and keep it stored in there instead. Cables under the main desk look to be managed pretty good with the custom raceway that you built, but what's going on with the second setup? I don't recall recommending a piece of wood to hide cables in my cable management guide. And finally, the PC part of the setup is equipped with the Ryzen 5 3600 and Gigabyte GTX 1070. I'm loving the Game of Thrones custom backplate, but I'm more impressed at the AIO tubes that you painted. Kind of reminds me of my big blue PC I built over a year ago, where I did the exact same thing. But why didn't you follow through and paint the whole radiator as well? I think it would have looked a lot better. Alright guys, so this is the part of the video where I'm going to annoy everyone at my little nitpicking. To start off, the four pictures on the wall are not aligned with your desk and it's a bit off center. You have Funko Pops in random locations on your desk that make no sense. I feel like Baby Groot would be perfect right underneath the monitor in the center. And finally, the Cololite RGB panels on the wall don't have a symmetrical design. You know, for someone that wants the world to be balanced, I expected a little more from you. I'm sorry for the rant, but for someone that has the name of Thanos, I hold him to the same high standard of the villain himself. I think this is a great setup with a solid foundation. It just needs a few tweaks to improve. Thank you, Thanos, for entering. And that wraps up today's episode. As always, make sure to vote on your favorite setups in the comment section down below and maybe consider dropping a like if you guys enjoyed the video. And if you're new here, consider subscribing as well because we do setup wars every single Monday. I love your beautiful nose hairs and I'll see you very soon in the next one.